Good morning, Junction Church. We are so glad that you've joined us for our online church service. And before I hand over to Manny for the sermon, we want to say happy Father's Day and thank you to all the grandfathers, all the fathers, all the prospective fathers, and all the men that have played such a great role in our lives. We want to honor you today, and we hope that you've got a wonderful Father's Day. Then also we want to give you just a few bit of information on what's lying ahead. As you know, we are now at 50 people per service. We will still be running our 8.30 and our 10 o'clock church services, but make sure that you register early so that you do not miss out on one of those church services because we are going to be keeping to that 50 person limit. And then lastly, we are also going to be postponing our ladies day because of the third wave. And we hope that once we have clarity on when the third wave has dissipated, then we will give a new date for the ladies day. But without any other further ado, I'm going to hand over to Manny. Good morning, Junction Church. We are continuing in our series, Rediscovering Joy, this morning. And Sophie started us off right in the beginning, showing us that in order to find true and real joy, we can only find that in God. And as we start to move, live and have our being in God, as we start to step into the plans and the purposes that He has for us, we begin to experience that joy and we begin to experience that joy not only through Him but in the things that He's asked us and His plan and the purposes that He has for our lives. And this morning I'm going to be focusing on rediscovering our joy through work. Many Christians and including myself, um, especially when I was a younger Christian, believed that work is a result of the fall. Because Adam and Eve sinned, we were cursed to work. And being a young Christian um, in my walk with God, I believed that the only way I could please um, God, the only way I could be effective for Him, was to be able to go into full-time ministry. And either by becoming a missionary, a pastor, or planting a church. And so I... I detested work to a degree. I believed that work was only a stepping stone to getting me into full-time ministry. And as a result, I didn't enjoy work. I um, planned everything to try and get into full-time ministry. But as I grew in my relationship with God, I began to discover that work is actually God's plan for us. Um, It's God initiated, God planned it for us, God enabled us to do it. And it's part of who God is. I don't know if you've ever read Genesis. In Genesis 1 verse 1 it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and earth. And I don't know if you've ever read Genesis 1 and thought of, hang on, maybe Genesis 1 is actually speaking about work. And that's who God is. God is, it's in His nature to work. He's, he's a worker. He's, 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 the per, he's the person who authored work and he's the person who orchestrated work in our lives and he enjoys and derives joy from his work and we see so in Genesis 1 verse 31 and chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 and it says this and God saw everything that he had made behold it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done and rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done and God continues not only to work in creation but he continues to work today through his son Jesus Christ and through us in John 14 verse 10 it says do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me the words that I say to you I do not speak on my own authority but the father who dwells in me does his work And in Philippians 2, we read that um, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to work and to will according to his good purpose. God is continuing to work in us and through us. And he derives great joy from, from that. And because we are created in his own image, we too need to work as he works. And work is really a blessing for us. God created Adam and Eve in in, in the garden and he gave them authority and he said to them, I give you dominion over the earth to subdue it, to be fruitful and to multiply in it. Because he created us in, in his image. He has called us to do the same as he does. And we see this in, in Genesis 2 verse 15. It says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. God partners with us 
to look after his creation, to look after the work of his hands. And in doing so, we are blessed and we receive joy as we begin to do that in our lives. But in order to understand how we rediscover joy in work, we have to understand how we have lost our joy in doing work. And there's three things that I want to just touch on to show us how we can lose joy in our work. And the first thing is sin. Because of Adam and Eve's sin, we've been separated from God, the one who has orchestrated and has authored work. And because of that work becomes difficult for us. It seems difficult. It becomes a pain for us to do. It just feels difficult. And that's why we think work is a curse rather than a blessing. But God had other, other plans and he sent his son Jesus Christ to redeem us from sin. And because sin separates, separates us from God, as we do our work, it feels joyless and it feels pointless and it feels like, why are we even doing it? But as Jesus came down to earth, he um, died on the cross for us. He redeemed us from our sin and he restored us back into right standing with God. And because of that, we can now start to work and live in the purposes and plans that God has for us. We, be, we be, once again become partners with God in looking after his creation and advancing his kingdom. And so sin is one of the reasons we, we lack joy and we've lost the joy of what it means to work. The other reason is, is when we allow work to become our identity, when work becomes about who we are and we lose the fact that work is not who we are, but we are children of the Most High God, we begin to lose our joy. Work becomes for us an identity, becomes, of, becomes who we are, that starts becoming priority in our life, and we start to lose joy as a result thereof. The third thing is, is money. When work becomes about money, we begin to lose our joy. And let me just clarify something here. God, money in itself is not wrong. God, the Bible says, God has enabled us to earn wealth and to make wealth. We work in order to get money to provide for our needs, to help advance God's kingdom, and to provide for others that are in need. But when money becomes the sole purpose for our job, we begin to lose joy. When we, when we start to live beyond our means, and we have to work more and more just to, 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 to live and, and live this lifestyle that we believe we need to have, and money becomes the all-encompassing factor, and it, to the detriment of our families and those around us, we begin to lose joy in our work. And so the question we want to ask this morning and answer is, is how do we rediscover, how do we do work the way God intended, so that we can rediscover the joy in work? And the first thing that we need to do is, is we need to understand who we are working for. In Colossians 3 verse 22 to verse 24, it says this, Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive your inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. When we start to live in the revelation that it's not, we're not working to please man, yes, we must obey our bosses and we need to honor them. But when we start to live in the revelation and we start to understand that it's actually that God that we're working for and that we are serving Him rather than earthly masters, we begin to rediscover our joy. And I want to share a little bit my experience of how I um, began to live in this revelation. I joined the police force when I left school at a very early age. I was 17 when I finished school. I joined the police when I was 17. And I became a detective in the police by the age of 19. And because of that, I was one of the youngest detectives in, my, in, my, uh, in the department. And I became very proud of, of that fact. And constantly wanted to prove myself and seek the approval of my commanding officer. I did things... Um, especially when his eyes were on me, to try and please him so that I could continually grow and be promoted. The problem is, is as I started to work more and more as a detective, my caseload grew. And it wasn't long before I had 18, 80 cases that I had to work through and solve. 
and, and it became very pressurized and I became very unhappy, not to mention the fact that I believed work was a curse and, I, and it was just a stepping stone to get out of, out of work and into uh, full-time ministry. And I remember my commanding officer calling me into his office one day, very unhappy with my work and where it was going. And he's asking me, what is going on? And just the pressure of it all got me to a place that I got so emotional and started crying before my commanding officer and not wanting him to think that I was weak and I couldn't handle the pressure. I made an excuse that now I was struggling with personal issues at work, at, at, at home. And... He was a little bit lenient on me and I carried on working and just the pressure kept on getting more and more on me. But God is amazing and in His grace, he, I was partnered up with this guy, this other detective, Marcel Delpeche, an amazing man of God. He no longer works in the police, he's actually pastoring at the Bikers Church in Fanabel. But I was partnered with him and I, I started to see how he worked, I started to see his work ethic. And I started to, he, he was just full of joy and he was always speaking about Jesus. And he would always say, I am here in this job for a purpose and a reason. And I started to realize that, hang on, maybe I too was here for a purpose and a reason. And I started to learn from him. I started to see how, how things were done. And it wasn't long before our commanding officer asked me and him to start leading some of the early morning meetings that we had with the other detectives to share scripture and to pray. And it was in those times that we were able to share the gospel with people. And as I started to realize and step into the thing that I was actually working for God and not for my commanding officer, my work started be to become better. My caseload dropped from 80 to 20. Not that I was getting any less cases than any of the other detectives, but I was starting to handle my cases better. So much so that my partner and I started to get commendations often throughout the year that came with a nice reward as a result. And when I left the police, my commanding officer said to me, it's been a pleasure working with you. You're one of the best detectives I've had. And if you ever want to come back, please speak to me and I will make it possible for you. But that is not the most amazing thing about, about that. A couple of years later, after I'd left the police, I started to receive telephone calls from my previous colleagues. Some of them would phone me and say, Manny, you won't believe I've given my life to Jesus. And I've resigned from the police and I'm going into full-time ministry. Or they would phone me and just say, Manny, what you were saying all those times um, back in the police, I have now given my life to the Lord. And I've kept in touch with my uh, ex-partner, Marcel. And he would tell me of stories of him hearing people that were in our unit that were giving their lives to the Lord. And as a result of us focusing and realizing that we had a purpose and that we were working for God and for His glory, His kingdom was advancing. People were coming to know Him as Lord and Savior, and He was being glorified. We need to realize that God's intention for us in working is to please Him, to bring Him pleasure and to bring Him glory. And when we start to do that, we start to rediscover the joy that we have through the work of our hands. Next point is we need to realize that everything that we do, and this includes our work, we need to do by faith in God the Father. The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. And in Thessalonians 1 verse 11, it says this, to this end, we always pray for you that our, that our God may make you worthy of His calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by His power. So that the, the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in Him according to the grace of, of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, as Christians and as human beings by nature, we tend to create silos for different aspects of our lives. And even for God, we have tend to create a silo as Christians. We say our faith is great when we're interacting with God in church or victory group or when we're having quiet times. And we often forget to involve God and bring His presence into our workplace. And as a result of that, we begin to lose our joy. But I've also started to grow and learn in my own walk with Him 
that I need to bring him into the workplace. I need to trust him for doing my job. And it's not an easy thing to do. It takes practice to do so. But the more we begin to bring God and the more we begin to have faith in him, in our workplace, the more God begins to do in us and through us for his kingdom and for his glory. And again, I want to share an example of my own personal experience. And I say this because it's funny how God works. When um, Sophie asked me to preach, this fell into my lap. And it's, it's funny how God gets us to preach the thing that he's doing, with, doing in our heart at the time. And I've always struggled and wrestled with this thing of work and God and whether I need to be in full-time ministry. And recently in this current job that I have, I joined in 2018, I joined as a customer service manager. And in about a, a year later, I received a promotion to a senior customer service manager. And because of that, although I was reporting to the technical lead of my company, I also started interacting with our VP. And I was included in management meetings and, and, and stuff like that. And my VP said to me, Manny, I know that you are working hard, that you've got a lot of premium clients. And I want to reassure you that we're going to get you another customer service manager to help you. And so I was looking forward to this. And a month passed, two months passed, three months passed. And I was sitting in a meeting with, with the VP and other people. And I brought it up. I said, when am I going to get another CSM and um, customer service manager? And my, the VP then said, well, you're not. We're not going to get you one. And I remember getting so angry that I picked up my phone and WhatsApped my, my, my mate and I said to him, can you please find me another job? This company um, doesn't keep to its promises and I got so upset. And then that evening I got home, I complained to Terry and I then went into my, my prayer closet, my prayer couch where I always pray and complain to God about life. And I just said to God, why is this happening? I'm struggling as it is. I've got a lot of work on my plate. And now the VP is not getting me another CSM. Why is that? And as I was praying and asking God, and as I was wrestling with this, I felt God say to me, have you ever looked at it from his point of view? I thought, you know, Lord, what do you mean by that? And I started to think about it. And I realized that the VP has got a business to run. He's got a boss that he needs to report to. We had, uh, the company hadn't been doing so well in the last two quarters. We hadn't made our target. And I've, I started to realize that, hang on, my VP has also got a boss to report to. He's also got a business and he has to make some tough choices. And instead of complaining about it, I need to be praying for him and for the company. And so I started to do this. I started to pray for my boss started to pray for the VP, I started to pray for the company. As I was doing that, I felt God say to me, why don't you reach out to the VP and gr grab a cup of coffee with him? So I did that. I reached out to the VP, had a cup of coffee, and I started to share my thoughts and what I felt and my anxieties and that sort of thing. And this is what the VP said to me. He said, Manny, you are one of the leaders that I'm looking to in the company. And I see you going quite far in the company, and I've already reached out to... Um, uh, the powers that be, the people that he's reporting to, to let them know that I want to raise you up as a leader. And this is the plans. And he started to share his plans and the things that he had for the company. And it wasn't six months later that my boss, the technical lead, resigned. And the VP approached me and said, Manny, do you want to be technical lead uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa? And at the time I wasn't ready. I got scared. But again, two months later, he came to me and said, Manny, are you ready to be technical lead of Sub-Saharan Africa? And I received a promotion looking after the all of Sub-Saharan. Sub and the, the point I'm trying to make is, is that we cannot exclude God from our work. Because when we face problems, when we're struggling in our job, and we do it without God, we lose that joy. And I can't tell you the amount of times I've been in meetings where it's been difficult, where the clients I've dealt with have been difficult, the executives shouting and screaming. And as, as, as this is happening, I just feel God say to me, start praying. And I start to pray in tongues under my breath. And the atmosphere of the meeting changes completely and totally. So much so that one of my colleagues said to me, Manny, I want you in all my meetings because whenever you're there, the atmosphere of the meeting changes. And it's because I've started practicing bringing God 
and trusting in Him for the work that I do, God begins to work in us and through us to change the atmosphere of our work because He's got a plan and a purposes for those that we work with. And so as you start to work, begin to trust in God and rely on Him to, to enable you and empower you to do the work that you want to do. And lastly, we need to re realize as we work in our jobs, that when we do our jobs for God, that our labor is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This scripture is speaking about advancing the kingdom of God. And just to go back to what I said in the beginning, for me, work had become a, thing, a stepping stone into full-time ministry. But I've come to realize that God has a plan and purpose for us in our workplace. And that work can be a ministry and an advancement of God's kingdom wherever we are. Whether you're a doctor, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a, a nurse, whatever you do, if you do it as unto the Lord, your labor will never be in vain. And I know this, I've been in ministry, I've, I've gone on missions, I've, I've um, gone on missionary trips where we've shared the gospel and I've seen people um, come to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But the most profound place where I've seen God work in my life is in the workplace. I shared the story of how the policeman would phone me and say that they've given their lives to the Lord. But this is, that, was, that has happened in almost every single job that I've had. All the jobs that I've been in, I've had people phoning me after I've left saying, Manny, I've given my life to the Lord. The most effective place I've, uh, I've been in for sharing the gospel has been in the workplace. And, and I remember one of the stories again, I was at one of my other companies, not in the police. I'd left that company and one of my colleagues phoning me up, he'd moved to PE and said to me, Manny, I just want to let you know all the things that you spoke about when we were working together. I've given my life to Jesus. And he moved back to Joburg and, we, and I discipled him, took him through the one-on-one. -on -one. And he, he loved God and he was passionate for God. Unfortunately, sadly, he's passed away. But I know that I'm going to see him in heaven. Why? Because God has a plan and a purpose for us. And our labor is not in vain when we do it for God and we do it for His glory. As we work for His glory and we start to see His kingdom advance, we can rediscover that joy in our work. So, in closing, I just want to say, re-look at your work. If you're struggling in your work, if you're finding, if you're unhappy in your workplace, re-look at it and, 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 and start to say, Father, I know I'm not working for this boss who is tough and is difficult, but I'm working for you. Yes, I want to honor him. I will pray for my job. I will pray for the company because if the company succeeds, so will I. But most of all, Father, I want to bring you glory because I am in this company, whatever that job might be, for your purposes and the plans that you have for my life to advance your kingdom and bring you glory. So start praying and start living with that attitude. Work by putting your faith and your trust in him, knowing that the labor you do in the Lord is not in vain. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, that it's you that has designed work in our lives. You are the author and orchestrator of work, and you've enabled us to do that in our own lives. And so, Father, I just pray for every single person here that is working or is in the workplace, Father. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to rediscover that joy, firstly and foremost, by knowing that we are working for you to the glory of your name. Secondly, that we are putting our trust in you, that whatever we do, we do it by faith in Jesus Christ. And lastly, that our labor is not in vain when we do it for you and for your kingdom. Help us to rediscover that joy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Worthy, so